Hey everybody and welcome back to the now 100% donor supported Wednesdays with Watson podcast. We are so excited to announce to you that we are 100% covered for production costs for the Wednesdays with Watson podcast for all of 2022. And so now moving forward, all of our work, all donations, all funds will go to pro bono counseling for those that can't afford it. I have such exciting news for you guys coming as it pertains to this. So you're going to want to make sure that you stay with us, stay, stay subscribed, stay connected, so you don't miss some really, really cool announcements coming down the line. Because you see, guys, apparently this little podcast that could, can, and is. And so while you're listening right there in your app, if you're not already following the podcast, hit that button. You can also participate in this mission that I just discussed by connecting with us on Patreon. That link is also in the show notes. You could just smash that Contact Amy button and you can reach me in all of the places. There is bonus content on all of our Enneagram episodes there. We had so much fun during the first part of the season, highlighting the ACE and our spaces, places, and ACEs season. I learned so much about how God makes all of us and how we respond to trauma in the framework of how we are made. If you missed those episodes, go back and listen as we featured all nine Enneagram types and those links are in the show notes or at wednesdayswithwatson.com. We have landed at the spaces and places portion of season three. We will cover trauma in the home as our place and our space will be childhood trauma. And I take a deep breath when I say that because childhood trauma as well as adverse childhood experiences absolutely colors the rest of our lives. We will explore how this trauma, how these traumas and how other adverse childhood experiences affect us in adulthood, especially when new trauma happens. And as you have come to expect from this podcast, we will bring you a couple stories of hope and help in this place and in this space. We will highlight the star of the story, and for those of you who are new here, that is Jesus, and how our three C's of community, counseling, and church can play a positive role in our healing, even if it's in the home, even if it's childhood trauma, even if you have an incredibly high adverse childhood experiences score. Because guys, spoiler alert, trauma and adverse childhood experiences is not the end of the story. It is never too late to get better. We in this series, this last part of this season, are going to feature professionals in this series that will discuss different treatment modalities for trauma in the home, including internal family systems, EMDR, reparenting. We're even, even going to have a chef that uses connecting with children through cooking to help them heal their trauma. This series is not only for those of us who have had experience, traumatic experiences or adverse childhood experiences inside our homes, but for parents who have children who may have experienced trauma outside of your home. We want to provide hope for you as parents. I want to provide hope for those of you who are foster or adoptive parents. This series is also helpful for teachers, youth leaders, and for anyone who has contact with children. In order to stop these things, it's going to take all of us. And I know that's a trendy statement right now, but it's going to take all of us. The purpose of this series is to educate so that each one of you can reach another person and we can see adult survivors healing instead of walking around as wounded children in an adult world. Great minds agree about the importance of home and family. I have my MBA, so I read Wealth of Nation, and in his book, which you don't need to read unless you're getting an MBA, but he very astutely points out and identifies the family as the most basic unit in any society. Aristotle said this about the family. He said the family is nature's, and put God there, established association for the supply of every man's wants. Now, I'm not one to argue with a mind like Aristotle, but I think he would probably add needs to that list. 
We are wired for family. We are wired to love them unconditionally. And we are wired to be loved unconditionally. But that quite often doesn't happen in the home. And trauma and negative experiences or adverse childhood experiences, as you will hear me say a lot in this episode, are as old as time. We don't even get out of the book of Genesis before we saw the very first murder and betrayal in the family. Actually, it was the very first murder, period, right? And it still happened inside the content of the family. We see this when Cain committed the first murder in the Bible by killing his very own brother. Joseph was betrayed and sold into slavery by his brothers. Jacob was tricked by his own son who stole his brother's birthright. Trauma and adverse experiences inside the home is not new. We see that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's nothing new under the sun. But the focus on it needs to be stepped up by a factor of 10. Wounded children become even more wounded adults because life is surely not done with any of us until we take our last breath. What if we first understood trauma and then use that knowledge and understanding at our disposal to beat it. What if wounded children who are presenting in the world as adults could get unstuck from that trauma? More than that, what if we could break the cycle of trauma in the home? What if? Multi-generational trauma is also a, not a new concept. The Bible talks about the curse of the second, the third, and even the fourth generation in Exodus chapter 34. Trauma tends to perpetuate from generation to generation. This phenomenon actually is not only biblical, but has scientific evidence, and it is described in a fancy term that we call epigenetics. For example, consider a little girl who experiences multiple traumas or adverse experiences over a long period of time. We know from my favorite book, The Body Keeps the Score, by Bessel van der Kolk and his well-known book that is called The Body Keeps the Score, that when we experience trauma, our our bodies respond in kind. So the concept of epigenetics is proof of van der Kolk's hypotheses and what many consider a scientific fact that the body does indeed keep the score. So let's go back to that little girl for a second who already has all of the eggs she will carry with her entire life in utero. When her mom's body responds to trauma, it does so at a basic cellular level and her reproductive organs are not left untouched, nor are those eggs in the baby. Many believe that trauma and or adverse experiences affect those eggs that she is carrying that could one day be children. So now we're at three generations and this is our generational curse. While research is relatively new and not well-funded, it is found that our DNA, while not fundamentally changed from trauma, is highly affected by it. Trauma changes the way the gene expresses itself. In other words, those genes don't work like they should. The affected gene then repeats itself as DNA does, and it's passed on to our offspring. And now we understand the multi-generational trauma. Already here, we've seen three generations affected by trauma. So this is an important place for us to park this series as we seek answers, help, and most of all, hope in this place of trauma and adverse childhood experiences in the home. If we don't intervene and educate, trauma is going to continue to beget trauma. Abuse will beget abuse. And PTSD is only one of the many things that will also occur. We must fight this repeating of the same horrific issues in our society because the body does in fact keep the score. Not only does childhood trauma increase the possibility of repeating trauma, but it weakens the physical constitution, often resulting in health issues aplenty. This proof is not only in van der Kolk's work, but of the trauma research I've referenced as it pertains to epigenetics. I have put those articles in in the show notes for you to read for yourself. Finally, we're going to explore the idea of reparenting in this part of the season. This also gives us hope that there are things that have happened to us does not have to be the end of the story. 
I'm excited to share these three aces inside our places and spaces section of the season, and that being internal family systems, EMDR, and reparenting. For those of you who are new here, let's take a few steps back and remind everyone of what trauma actually is. It's a buzzword, as the word trigger is right now, and if we're not careful, it becomes minimized. But as already noted, it is so important that we understand it from the onset. A very basic understanding of traumatic events is this. This is by definition. Any event that pushes our brains outside of your very own window of tolerance. Your window of tolerance is different from mine. This is why we don't compare traumas. Think of your window of tolerance as a bowling lane. Drop the ball and any outside force or lack of skill pushes that ball into the gutter. The gutter, and I'm air quoting, for your brain is that window of tolerance. And when that ball goes into the gutter, your brain then becomes hyper aroused, which we see in fight or flight or the cheetah and, and the episodes in season one that I talked about, the, the cheetah uh, analogy, whereby it makes us anxio- anxious and hypervigilant. Or when that bowling ball goes into the gutter or outside of your window of tolerance, you can be hypo-aroused, which looks a lot like freeze, and a new term that has come, which is fawn, which is just kind of basically existing. There are three different types of trauma, acute trauma or sudden onset trauma, occurs usually with a single event or just a series of events that happen quickly. Acute trauma can and does push some brains outside of the window of tolerance. Then they can experience both those hyper and hypo arousal symptoms. If we can get to that acute trauma treatly quickly and treat it aggressively, we can mitigate some of the damage and provide for the best possible outcome. You see a lot of EMDR therapists on the scene at school shootings and things of that nature so that they could get to those kids and get to them quickly so that we could have the best possible outcome from that traumatic event. The second type of trauma is chronic trauma. Chronic trauma is usually more than one trauma, but always over a long period of time. As I mentioned, we don't compare traumas, but it is important to note that this type of trauma will probably require more work and early investment. Early intervention is still really, really important. Children who experience chronic trauma or other adverse childhood experiences in the home need intervention, and for that we have to understand their reality. Left untreated, like mine, chronic trauma can and probably will turn into complex trauma. Complex trauma is chronic trauma that has other layers of complexity, most notably physical manifestations. Complex trauma from an early age is very difficult to overcome. But if you are under the sound of my voice right now, you know that is possible. Again, the longer the trauma occurs and the longer it is left untreated, the more difficult it is to begin healing. However, as we are going to highlight, there is hope. There is healing, and there's an abundance of modalities to get us there. And when the star of the story is at the helm, guys, there's a billion reasons to hope. As I mentioned, early intervention in children is of the utmost importance as trauma actually slows brain development, literally shrinking children's brains. Jeremy Fox will talk a little more about that when we have him as a guest for this series. Children's and adults alike will likely find a weakened physical constitution and will find themselves chasing diseases the rest of their lives. Another thing that I have learned on this podcast journey is the number of people walking around very ill with a ton of unresolved trauma. You often hear me say I will never stop fighting for people like you because I am you. I have mentioned adverse childhood experiences a few times. And I have done that because of the stigma of the word trauma. Adverse childhood experiences is a wildly accepted measurement of psychological effects of trauma in the home and childhood. You can find the link to take that quiz in the show notes. But here are the 10 adverse childhood experiences. Emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional neglect, 
physical neglect, divorce, an incarcerated parent, substance abuse in the home, domestic violence, or mental illness in the home. I am confident that everyone under the sound of my voice heard some things that occurred in their homes. Does that mean that you have post-traumatic stress? Certainly not. But it does mean that maybe you need to pay attention to the way the ramifications of some of these things are showing up in your life. Do they show up in your home? We're going to have a really good episode with a parent who found this to be true in her own parenting. Could you be the person that breaks this epigenetics? If you didn't hear something on that list that occurred in your home, how about the people that you know? Did you know that one in four and and one in seven women and men respectively will report adverse childhood experiences of some kind? Was the good Dr. Seuss right when he said that adults are just outdated children? What if you could go back and show compassion and grace and provision for that little kid that endured the things your brain cannot metabolize and heal yourself and live a life absent of all the ills of unresolved trauma. What if? Stay tuned because we have some hope and help for you. I also love this quote by Stacia Tosh. We worry about what children will become tomorrow, yet we forget that he is somebody today. So let's remember that children living within the four walls of a home that isn't safe is a child today that needs attention today. Because Smith and Aristotle were spot on. Home home is where it's at. Home is where it's at. So join me in this series to create a safer and more healthier outlook on childhood trauma in the home, hopefully yielding healthier people who can enjoy their lives instead of living in the gutters of their shadowed window of tolerance. So I'm so excited about this season, guys. Stay tuned for more as we will spend nine episodes diving deep into the place of the home and the space of childhood trauma. I can't wait to bring you more information so that we could continue our mission here and helping people remember that they are seen, that that they are known, that they are heard, that they are loved, and that they are valued. And to all of you wounded adults out there walking around with your heart in a billion pieces. I want you to know I see you. And I want to pray for you. So please reach out to me in whatever way you want to do that. Again, just hit that contact Amy in the show notes. Finally, if you don't know the star of the story, Jesus, who can help you with these monsters of childhood trauma, I would also be happy to introduce you to him. Again, please reach out to me. And until we come back here in the healing zone, with our first episode, with our first guest, who will talk about how her childhood trauma affected her deeply in adulthood, especially as it pertains to new trauma. We will be back here in two weeks. Hope to see you then. Hey guys, and thanks for listening. I hope that we were able to teach you something today and that this upcoming series will strike a chord with someone somewhere and that you can know that you can live an abundant life and that you are so loved by people you don't even know. As I mentioned, we'll be back two weeks here in the Healing Zone with our first interview, and we will highlight how trauma colors how we deal with trauma in adulthood. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this series. Also, head to the Patreon link and go back and listen to some of those AC chats. You'll love those. Until then, I'm going to say it again, even though I already said it. You are seen. You are known. You are heard. You are loved. And you are valued. See you in two weeks, guys. Let my life glorify you and teach me to walk beside you. I want to be more like you. So